So, you've seen God, huh? <laughs> or you died and went to hell. Or you died and went to heaven and then you've come back and uh, uh, write a book about it or um, have a YouTube channel dedicated to what you saw in heaven or in hell or, or that the Lord personally appeared to you today. Hmm. Mean, uh, you know, never mind what is called the common salvation, common unto all, um, but no... No, you're part of that esoteric crowd, right? That elite, you know, because like many people will say, um, who have seen it, you know, seen it, doesn't do that for everybody, right? I thought, I thought we are to walk by faith and not by sight. You, you might say that you do, but your faith is predicated upon you seeing the Lord well, he, he appeared to me after I believed. Hmm. Hmm. Did he? Let me, let me get your attention right off the bat here. You haven't seen God. You have not seen our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. You have not gone to hell and called upon the name of the Lord in hell, just like Jonah did. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. Or you have not been to heaven and then come back and write a book about it. You have not seen heaven or hell, and you have not seen the Lord. What saith the scriptures about this? It has been made plainly obvious unto me by our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, that this is a direction that must be over, uh, undertaken because this is something that is very prevalent among the church of the living God. And a lot of people are being deceived thinking that they have seen it, the Lord, when they have not seen the Lord. Okay? Do I got your attention now? Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. Turn off Mr. Scorby. Pick up an actual physical copy of the scriptures. And please, follow me along. How, how many of you do that? When, you, when it is said to you, you know, get, get the scriptures, follow along word for word, verse by verse. How many of you do that? I know there are some out there who do, but how many of you do? How many of you, uh, to you is this just background noise, which can so easily happen when you're listening to good old Alexander Scorby? Get the scriptures. What say it the scriptures? That is our standard. Not your emotionalism. Not your feelings. But the scriptures, are, uh, these are the, this is the standard. Not the charismatic thing that is within some of you, which is in many. And you see them all, they're right here on YouTube. You know, these people, you know, and we've talked about this already before, about visions and dreams. <laughs> you haven't seen anything. Now, let's get right, uh, let's right away say this. I am not doubting at all that some of these people who are very sincere, very forthright, and they can even describe to you the correct doctrine for today and even true salvation. But their faith is based upon what? What they have saw, what they've seen, what they saw. Hence, your faith isn't based off of the true faith which was once handed down unto the saints. But the launching pad for your faith is off of what you saw? You must be uh, a Jew then, huh? Hmm. But like I said, a lot of these people are sincere. I am not doubting that some of these people have actually seen something. I'm not doubting that at all. 
I'm not doubting that at all. Because guess what? Ghosts, poltergeists, and that kind of stuff, that does happen. And incidentally, if you are a Christian and are being plagued by ghosts, um, you ought to figure out why. There is a, a video that we talked about that will be in the description box of this video. Okay? But I'm not denying that these people have seen, haven't have seen something. They've seen something. Oh, absolutely. But what we are going to sh look at today will show us that today it is not the Lord that they have seen. Now, can a man see God as in the past today? No. No. Oh, don't worry. We're going to get to the scriptures and we're going to go through this. But there is a way that today you and I can see God. Like what? What are you talking about, Brett? Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. And turn with me in your authorized version of the scriptures to the book of Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Okay? Romans chapter 1. There is a way that you and I today can see God. <clears throat> Romans chapter 1. Verses 19 on to verse 21. Uh, let, you know what? Let's go to verse 25. Okay? Verses 19 on to verse 25 in Romans chapter 1. Before we get into deep, into this very deeply. There is a way that you and I today in this dispensation, yes, that we can still see God today. Because as we will find out, yes, God did appear to certain select people within this dispensation. But there were purposes behind it. Like I said, those of you who claim to have seen God, who have seen it, uh, are you Jewish? Oh, you must be an apostle then, huh? Or is the Lord revealing to you uh, an unfinished uh, uh, book within the canon of Scripture? Nonsense. But Romans chapter 1, verses 19 on to verse 25. We can see God today. How? Oh, that's being prideful, huh? Wait till we go through the scriptures. Oh, what you must think of me. <laughs> Romans chapter 1, verses 19 on to verse 25. Please follow me along. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. In them. Not visually, okay? Okay. For God hath shewed it unto them. <gasps> Means that he's going to reveal himself, show himself to people. <laughs> Keep reading, okay? For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Godhead. What is the Godhead? The Godhead is what? Spirit, soul, and body. You and I, we are made in the image of God. We have a spirit. We have a soul. We have a body. So, so, okay. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world can clearly be seen. You know, when you look at your ugly mug in the mirror, I... <laughs> um, you can see God's handiwork in yourself. That you have a spirit, you have a soul, you have a body. Okay? You look outside at nature, at trees and grass, and the intricate workings within a leaf, the, uh, the retina of the eye, the, uh, the, bio, the biological system within your body. Okay? We can see God through the things that he has made. Okay? You look in the mirror, Jack. You can see God. Not that you are God. No, 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 no. No. You can see God in what he has made. Okay? You can see God in what he has made. He made you. 
So at the fact that you are looking at yourself in the mirror, you can know that there is a God because here you are. You have a spirit, you have a soul, you have a body. Even as deceived as you are, as wicked as you are, or as even as heretical or evil as you are, you still have a spirit, you have a soul, you have a body. Okay? Okay? And you look outside at the intricacies of nature, you can see his handiwork. Hence, in these things, we can see God. Yes. Let's continue. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. You look at yourself in the mirror. It's like, I have a spirit and I have a soul and I have a body. This did not evolve over millions and trillions of years in a galaxy far, far away. Okay, no, that did not happen like that. Someone created it. You look outside at nature, okay? His creation, that did not happen from millions and trillions of years ago in a galaxy far, far away. No, it was created, all right? But see, you can know God but what, by what you see. Because that when they knew God, okay, you can see what he has made, even when you look at yourself in the mirror, okay? They glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful. But became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise. They became fools. Wise. You're wise in your own eyes. What did Satan promise on the eve? Disobey what the Lord said? Eat of this fruit, and your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Mm -hmm. You fools. And change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man. Not giving glory to God for what he has made, even at when you're looking at your ugly mug in the mirror. No, but you attribute it unto man. What is of man? Millions and billions of years ago. And to birds. You know, the third member of the Trinity. Okay? And four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie. And worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Those of you who think that you, you know, you've seen it. You've seen God. God appeared to you. No, he hasn't. No, he hasn't. Uh, you're actually uh, worshiping and serving the creature. You're holding to that. You're going to defend that to the death. And then twist scripture to defend it. You haven't seen God. You did see a God. Yes, a created being, but you have not seen the God of the scriptures. Let's go. Now, let's establish something. Has man seen God? Absolutely he has. Yes, yes. Let's prove this, okay? Go to Genesis chapter 1. Uh, excuse me. Genesis chapter 3. Let's establish this first. That God did appear in a form of some kind onto man within every dispensation. Okay? We're going to be looking at that. We're going to be concentrating on the first four dispensations primarily and we're going to look at not every single example but at the prominent examples when God appeared unto man in a form of either man or in some other form like in uh, Moses and the bush, bush and stuff like that okay yes God has appeared unto man yes he has Let's establish this. And we are going to look at it at every dispensation up to the fourth one. Because, you know, the fifth, the time of Jacob's trouble. The sixth, the kingdom of heaven. Seven, eternity. 
Uh, yeah, we don't need to get into that, but because these charismatics with their esoteric, you know, the in crowd, exoteric with an X is for the general populace, but those of you who have seen it, you are of the esoteric, you know, the elect, the, 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 the ones who have a little bit more special than those who have the common salvation. Oh, but uh, you're oh so humble because you've seen, if you were truly a humble person who have supposedly seen the Lord, you would have kept your mouth shut and not said anything. Oh, well, Paul did that. Well, we'll get to that. Don't get ahead of me. But let's, let's establish this. The very first dispensation in Scripture, the very first dispensation of Scripture, did man see God? Yes. Genesis chapter 3, verses 7 on to verse 10. Follow me along. Don't look at me. Look in the Scriptures. Okay? It's your own fault if you don't want to hear this. It's your own fault. Genesis chapter 3, verses 7 on to verse 10. Satan tempted Eve. Eve ate of the tree, fruit of the tree. She gave it unto her husband, Adam. Okay? Hence, we pick up at verse 7. And the eyes of them both were open. Both Adam and Eve, because they disobeyed. And they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. See, before that, sin wasn't in the world. But because they disobeyed what God had said, and went after that one thing he said for them not to eat, they did, excuse me, sin was brought in because of their disobedience. Verse 8. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And as I've discussed with you before, how does a voice walk? That's talking about Adam and Eve. No, the context doesn't fit that. No. The Lord God was walking in the cool of the day in the garden. They heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. How does a voice walk unless he has a body? How does God walk hmm? unless there is a body? Hmm. And the Lord God, verse 9, called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Verse 10, And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. Hmm. So obviously, in looking at verse 8, And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. How does the voice walk? Unless there's a body. God himself was walking in the garden. And Adam and Eve saw him. Mm -hmm. They heard his voice. It's like, uh oh, you know, they had, they had, in a panic, they sewed fig leaves together. And they heard, they said, uh oh, here, come, here he comes. Let's hide. And God, who knows all, where are you? Where art thou? Mm -hmm. Go to Revelation chapter 21. Revelation chapter 21. Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 on to verse 3. Now, this is the final dispensation that we are looking at in Revelation chapter 21, uh, verses 1 on to verse 3, when there will be no more evil, okay? God at the beginning intended to be amongst his creation. God at the very beginning intended to be amongst his creation. For we as man to have fellowship with him purely. But because of disobedience brought about by deception. Okay. Not at gunpoint, remember. But because of that, that pristine, pure fellowship was broken. Okay. Hence, 
Man was booted out of the Garden of Eden, ending the very first dispensation. But at the very beginning, God intended to have fellowship with man and so that man could see God, be that God could be amongst his creatures, what he has created. Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 on to verse 3. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. And the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Verse 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven, saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Some of you heretics and deceived people, well, that's how it is for today. No, this is the final dispensation. Eternity. Well, there will be no more evil, okay, coming up. All right? And, and, and go to Revelation chapter 22, verses 1 on to verse 5. And he shewed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, in the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse. But the throne of God and of the Lamb, a singular throne, one God, shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. Verse 4. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. See, at the very beginning, in the very first dispensation, this was God's plan all along. He to dwell amongst his people, to have an unbroken, pristine, pure fellowship with man. God made man because he wanted to, because of his pleasure, uh, because of his good pleasure. All things were and are created. Because he wanted to. He wanted to have relationship, fellowship with man. But man disobeyed. Not at gunpoint, but man disobeyed. Hence, psst, got kicked out. But see, from the beginning, God intended for him to dwell amongst man and man to have pristine relation with him. So yes, in the very beginning, in the very beginning, Yes, man saw God. Absolutely. And as we have just looked at here in Revelation, yes, the original intent in the Garden of Eden, the very first dispensation of Scripture, man, God's intent was to have pristine fellowship with man. And it will be like that eventually. After all evil has been permanently eradicated and the new heaven and the new earth be brought about. Okay, so yes, in the very first dispensation, man saw God. Man saw God. One second, brethren. Yes, man saw God in the very first dispensation. And I also want us to read very quickly Revelation 19, verses 11 on to verse 16. Okay, because during the time of Jacob's trouble, the fifth dispensation. Okay, yes. Man is going to see God in the fifth dispensation. In the sixth dispensation, the kingdom of heaven, you're going to see God sitting on the throne in Jerusalem. And in the seventh dispensation, the final dispensation, uh, we just looked at it in Revelation chapter 22. Those of us who are his, we're going to see his face. Okay? We're going to see him. And even those in the book of Revelation who are, are being tormented, you're going to be tormented in the presence of the Lamb. Okay? But 
Even in the uh, dispensation of the time of Jacob's trouble. Yeah, every all eyes are going to see God. Uh, Revelation chapter 19, verses 11 on to verse 16. This is the end of the time of Jacob's trouble. When uh, the second coming. And I saw heaven opened, and behold a white horse. And he that sat on him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the capital W Word of God. This is our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So see, at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble, still within that dispensation, all eyes are going to see God. During the kingdom of heaven, you're going to see God. In eternity, boom, you're going to see God. And like I said, in the very first, go back to Genesis chapter 3, in the very first dispensation of Scripture, the Garden of Eden, that was God's intent. That was God's intent. To be amongst man and have pristine fellowship and relationship with him. And because of that, in verse 8, and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden, in Genesis chapter 3, garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees in the garden. God himself appeared to them. They saw God. He was in the form of what? Had to have been, obviously, a body, a man, because he was walking. He was walking. So see, in the very first dispensation of Scripture, yes, man saw God. And at the beginning, that was God's intent. And it will be thus, as we already looked at, in the future, but not yet. So yes, in the very first dispensation of Scripture, man saw God. Absolutely. Absolutely. What about the second dispensation, the time of the patriarchs? Okay. Now, like I said, we're not going to look at all these occurrences, but what we need to establish is that God, yes, did appear unto man in every dispensation. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. We would be lying if we said otherwise. But see, these charismatics come along and twist these things and try to make them relevant for today right now. Even though God did appear to people within this dispensation. <gasps> There were certain circumstances and conditions to that which are not meet today, right now, after those circumstances took place. Okay? But let's establish that yes, God did appear unto man within every dispensation. Second dispensation of Scripture, the time of the patriarchs. Genesis chapter four, uh, 17, verse 1 on to verse 4. Like I said, we're not looking at every appearance, okay? But we just need to establish that, yes, God has appeared unto man in uh, in some kind of form, okay? In some kind of form of man, or whether it was to Moses in a bush, and we'll look at that, don't worry about that, okay? God has appeared unto man. Yes, he has, in every dispensation, okay? That's what we need to establish. Genesis chapter 17, verses 1 under verse 14. The dispensation after the Garden of Eden, the time of the patriarchs. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Genesis chapter 17, verses 1 on to verse 4. And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. So yes, 
God appeared unto Abram, who would become Abraham. And yes, yes, Abraham saw God. Yes, he did. Doesn't say anything like it doesn't in Genesis chapter 3. Uh, it doesn't say anything about seeing his face. But, you know, you can see someone and not see their face. Yeah, yeah. How many of you sisters out there, you know, who don't want to look at the, in the face of a man, but yet you see the man? Hmm? Yeah, you can see someone and not see their face, okay? You charismatics who want to defend your lunacy would probably even want to dispute that, wouldn't you? But, yes, Abram saw God. God appeared to him, obviously. Also, Gen uh, Genesis chapter 18, verses 1 under verse 3. Again, And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood, bef stood by him. And this is, not, this is not the Trinity. Two of them were angels. One of them was God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, before Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, okay? Jesus Christ is God the Father. This is a precarnate form, okay? Okay? And he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, there three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground and said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee from thy servant. Okay, and skipping to verses 16 on to verse 22. And the men rose up from, from thence and looked toward Sodom. And Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation? And all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him, for I know him that he will command his children and his household after him. And they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. And the Lord said, Because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it which is come unto me, and if not, I will know it. And the men, which were two angels, turned their faces from thence and went toward Sodom. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord, who was there physically in presence in the form of a man. So, yes, yes. In the time of the patriarchs, God appeared unto man. And in this, he was in the form of a man. The other two were angels. Okay? Uh, go to John chapter 5. Go to John chapter 5. Like I said, we just need to establish that in every dispensation, yes, God did make appearances. Yes, he did. Okay? John chapter 5, verses 32 on to verse 38. Okay. There is another that beareth witness of me, and I know that the witness which he witnesseth, witnesseth of me is true. Ye sent unto John, and he bare witness unto the truth. But I receive not testimony from man, but these things I say that ye might be saved. He was a burning and a shining light, and ye were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. And that does not mean that there was an actual aura glowing from John that lost people can visit, visibly see. That's nonsense. What, are we walking around shedding light off or something like that? That's insane. That's charismatic nonsense. Okay? Well, let's continue. But I have greater witness than that of John. For the works which the Father hath given me to finish, the same works that I do bear witness of me, that the Father hath sent me. And the Father himself which hath sent me hath borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, 
nor seen his shape. And ye are, and ye have not his word abiding in you. For whom he hath sent, him ye believe not. Wait a second, Brad. Wait a second. What, what do we do right there with verse 37? Huh? What do we do with that? And the Father himself which hath sent me hath borne witness of me. Okay? Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. But wait, 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 wait. Time out. Time out. Time out. Jesus is God the Father. But he just says there that you have never, what is that? You've never heard his voice at any time. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. Uh-oh. What do we do with this? Oh, oh, 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4, just one verse. 1 John chapter 4, verse 12, okay? 1 John chapter 4, verse 12. Again, John says again, No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Of course, talking about the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit that dwells within us. But no man has seen God at any time. Oh, we might have a conundrum here, right? Go to John chapter 1. John chapter 1, verse 18. God will appear in the Old Testament. He has appeared in a body, in the form of a man. That's why we're looking at this. And when Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, when God was manifest in the flesh, born of a woman... Of course, you saw God within the dispensation of the law and after the death, burial, burial, and resurrection. Okay? That's why we are looking at this. John chapter 1, verse 18. John chapter 1, verse 18. No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. Oh boy. Oh boy. Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. Matthew chapter 1, come on. Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. Come on, fingers, work with me. Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. She found with child of the Holy Ghost. Now, morons, Mormons teach that the Holy Ghost in the form of a person actually lay with Mary. Yeah, yeah, the Mormons are a perverse satanic sex cult. Watch out for these devils, okay? Uh, Go to Luke chapter 1 now. Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, verses 34 and 35. 34 and 35. Then said Mary, uh, Luke chapter 1, verses 34 and 35. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? She didn't know a man. She was a virgin. Hey, even you Catholics... You know, <laughs> perpetual virgin, virgin. <laughs> no, but even you Catholics, yes, yeah, she was a virgin. And the angel answered unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Hmm. Son of God. Isaiah chapter 7. Isaiah chapter 7. Isaiah chapter 7. Verses 10 on to verse 16. Come on, fingers, work with me. Isaiah chapter 7, verses 10 on to verse 16. Isaiah chapter 7, verses 10 on to verse 16. Moreover, the Lord spake on, again unto Ahaz, saying, Ask thee a sign of the Lord thy God. 
Ask it either in the depth or in the height above. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, neither will I tempt the Lord. And he said, Hear ye now, O house of David. Is it a small thing for you to weary men? But will ye weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel, or Emmanuel. I know that heretic um, Sam Gipp says that Jesus ought to be called this. No, no. Jehovah saves. That's what the name Jesus means. Emmanuel, God among us. Jesus Christ. Yes, God was among us. Yes, but his name is Jesus Christ. Jehovah saves. Christ, anointed one. Okay? Butter and honey shall he eat, that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child shall know to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land that thou abhorrest shall be forsaken of both her kings. Okay? In Galatians chapter 4, Galatians chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 6. Don't worry, I'll tell you after we look at this. Okay? Don't worry. Galatians chapter 4. Come on. Come on. You're, you're, you're right there saying, I've seen God. I've seen it. I'm very humble. I gotta stay humble because not everybody have seen it. Therefore, I am part of that esoteric in crowd, certain elect that only have this privilege while everybody else has the common salvation. And you accuse me of being prideful. Galatians chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 6. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing, nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman, made under the law. Yeah, the law was still binding while our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, was walking on the earth. And the law was still binding until he paid the debt of the law. Okay? To redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoptions of, uh, adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. No man has seen God at any time, but yet people have seen God. People have seen God. What? How do we explain this? John chapter 1 again. John chapter 1, verse 14. John chapter 1 again, verse 14. What, what are you doing, Brad? <laughs> John chapter 1, verse 14. Beg your pardon. And the Word, capital W, was made flesh and dwelt among us, and, was be and we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. See, in the Old Testament, when God would appear unto man, we're going to look at this too, uh, when we look at uh, Jacob who not only saw God, but wrestled with him. But in the Old Testament, God would appear and then disappear. He would appear and go away. Kind of like how under the law, the Holy Ghost would come and go, come and go. It was not permanent. When he, when Jesus Christ, when Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, God manifests in the flesh he dwelt amongst his people, the Jews, on earth among man for 30 years in the form of a man, in a body, okay? Whereas in the Old Testament, yes, he would appear in a form of a man, but go away. It wasn't a permanent thing. He didn't tabernacle, live among man as he did 
in our Lord Jesus Christ, who is God our Father. So, what are they? What is it talking about? No man has seen God, but yet you have seen Jesus. If you've seen Jesus Christ, you've seen God. How does that work? Um, that's reference onto the soul. Okay, uh, Mister Ruckman and his protege, they have this right. They have this right. You are not seeing me. Brad, I'm looking right at you. No, you are not. You are seeing the skin suit. You are not seeing actually me. Okay? You are just seeing the outer. Okay? We have a spirit. We have a soul. We have a body. The spirit and soul are contained within the body. This is how man was able and is able to see God, okay? Because he makes an appearance in a body, okay? There is Job in the whirlwind. Yes, yes, yes. Different dispensation, okay? Different dispensation. God does not appear to people in whirlwinds today. Okay, in a flaming bush. Yes, a different dispensation. Yes, a different dispensation. Not pertinent for today. See, you charismatic nutballs are, while you might have correct doctrines and stuff like that, you're still taking things out of other dispensations and trying to make them relative for today. Hence, you're crazy. You're absolutely nuts. Okay? You're crazy. So, how were they able to see God without seeing God? Because God could manifest himself in a form that could be visible unto man. See, whether it be a man in the whirlwind, whirlwind in the flame of a bush. Okay? Okay? Let's continue this. Go now to 1 John chapter 5. Okay, uh, looking at John chapter 4, uh, John chapter 1, verse 14 again. And the Word was made flesh. The Word was made flesh. Beware of this Gnostic belief that flesh became God. See, that's Gnostic. Exalting flesh. That flesh became God. God became flesh. Not Flesh became God, sir. You better be careful with that. That is Gnosticism, that is heresy, and that is woohoo insanity. Okay? God became flesh. Flesh is not God. God was manifest in the flesh. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Yes, yes. If flesh was God, why at the Last Supper didn't Jesus say, Bite! me and take a piece of my flesh answer that why why didn't he do that oh he turned the bread into flesh you're crazy you're crazy you're absolutely crazy beware of that gnostic teaching that flesh became god god became flesh oh there's a big difference there buddy boy there's a big difference there. Very big. Very big. Go to 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. Hence. Hence. Okay? Hence. When um when uh he was looking at uh when he was looking at uh when uh, Abraham, when he was looking at the visitors who came upon him, okay? God was the third one. He appeared in the form of a man. Okay? But, go to John chapter 5. John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5, verses 1 on to ver uh, verses 5 on to verse 13. 1 John chapter 5, verses 5 on to verse 13. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God, this is he who that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, signifying a natural birth, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit, capital S, is truth. For there are three that bear record in heaven, 
the Father, which is the soul, the Word, which became flesh, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one, the Godhead, spirit, soul, and body. Okay? And there are three that bear witness in earth, the spirit and the water and the blood. And these three agree in one. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness that of God, which he hath testified of his son. He that believeth on the son of God hath the witness in himself. The witness in himself, the spirit. Okay. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record, the scriptures, that God gave of his Son. Okay? And what are we reading to? Yes. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of, of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. These three are one, spirit, soul, and body. Okay? God was manifest in the flesh. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Beware of the Gnostic teaching that flesh became God. No, God became flesh. <laughs> There's a very, 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 very big difference there, dear friend. Very, very big difference. Very big difference. One second, brethren. Okay, sorry about that. Now, go back to uh, Genesis. Genesis chapter 32. Just made a reference of this, okay? Genesis chapter 32. Verses 24 on to verse 32. Still within the dispensation of the patriarchs, okay? We went through that to show that, yes, God can and does and has appeared in a body. And Jesus Christ is come in the flesh and he uh, tabernacled, dwelt among man for what, 33 years? Okay, the difference between uh, that and this is that before God was manifest in the flesh, he, he could come and go, disappear at will. Genesis chapter 32, verses 24 on to verse 32. Abraham saw God. Even Sarah saw God. Adam and Eve saw God. Absolutely. Adam and Eve, dispensation of the Garden of Eden. Abraham, dispensation of the patriarchs. But Jacob here. Jacob. Yes, Jacob. Genesis chapter 32, verses 24 on to verse 32. And Jacob was left alone. Now, he knew that Esau was coming. This is the backstory. So he sends everybody out. It's like, and he was left alone. Okay. He was there by himself. And there was a man. And there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. Wait a minute. 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 Wait, a minute. Wait. Jacob was alone. But, and there was a man. And there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. But I thought he was alone. Where'd this guy come from? Where'd this guy come from? Who was this guy, by the way? Who is this man? Let's keep reading. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint, and he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. What does Israel mean? For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. That's what Israel means, by the way. And Jacob asked him, and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? And he blessed them there. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, are you looking at that? For I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. He saw God face to face. But as we're going to look at here coming up, um, 
No one can see God and live. And no one has seen God at any time. But Jacob just wrestled with God. Because God appeared in a form that man could see him in. Okay? Okay? He appeared as a man. He appeared as a man within the Garden of Eden. How does the voice walk? He appeared as a man uh, unto Abraham and Sarah as one of the three uh, men, who, and the two of them were angels who went to go and destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay? And he just here wrestled with Jacob. So yeah, God, yeah, God appeared in a form of a man. And also, yes, uh, in the form of a whirlwind. Yes, in the uh, burning bush. Yes, we're going to look at that. Yes, 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 yes. He appears in forms that man is able to see him in. Okay? But this, see this, see this? This, God was establishing the Hebraic line, the Hebraic line which began with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay, that Hebraic line, line out of Shem. Okay, there was a special purpose and condition for him making this appearance, which is not for us today. Okay, you got to rightly divide the word of truth, my friend, or you're going to go on believing such nonsense. Okay, but uh, uh, who is this? How did, where? Verse 24, and Jacob was left alone, and they wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. So he was alone, saved this man. The, the words that our Lord uses in the text doesn't support that. Where'd this guy come from? Let's, let's look at a clue here. Go to Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. See, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. And God manifest in sinful flesh felt all the things that you and I feel daily but yet never sin God can't sin it's impossible for God to sin but see God within flesh that's the only way God could feel the temptations that man goes through but yet God was cannot be tempted with evil but flesh can see you got to remember dear friend flesh has its own mind Flesh is its own thing. Why do you think these heretics like to confuse the matter and say that flesh became God and rather ignore the truth that God became flesh? Ever wonder that? But Mark chapter 16, verses 12, on to verse 14. Where'd that guy come from? It said Jacob was alone and a man wrestled with him. Where'd the man come from? Where'd the man come from? Mark, here's a clue. Mark chapter 16, verses 12 on to verse 14. And after he appeared in another form, this is the, talking about our Lord Jesus Christ. And after he appeared in another form unto two of them, as they walked and went into the country. And they went and told it unto the residue. Neither believed they them. Afterward, he appeared unto to the eleven as they sat at meat and abraded them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. Now, this was the risen Lord. The risen Lord. Not Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. See, he died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And he had his new body, which bore still semblance of the scars in his hand and in his side. Why? Be, and we'll look at this, I believe, when he said on the Thomas, doubting Thomas, uh, here, put your, hands in the, uh, put your hands in the nails holes and reach in, in your side. It was for a sign for the Jews. Okay? Because the Jews require a sign. But see, the point is, the resurrected Lord appeared in a form, appeared whenever he wanted to, okay? And more on this, more on this, go to Luke chapter 24 now. Luke chapter 24, he appeared. He appeared, okay? Luke chapter 24, verses 13 on to verse 16. 
Now, remember we just saw about how he appeared unto two people, two men? Check this out. And behold, two of them went the same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about three score furlongs. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holden that they should not know him. And he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that ye have one to another as ye walk and are sad? You're like, okay, well, Brad, he could have just wandered up. True, true. But what do you do about this hot shot? Uh, Luke chapter 24, verses 27, on to verse 31 now. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he, our Lord Jesus Christ, expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And they drew nigh unto the village, whither they went, and he made as though he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. And it came to pass, check this out, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it, and break, and, eh, he took bread and blessed it, and break, and gave to them. And their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. Vanished. The risen Lord in his resurrected form. Okay? Just appeared. Disappear. So the man that wrestled with Jacob, where did he come from? I don't know. It is quite possible that he just poop appeared. Just like he poop appeared in the Garden of Eden. Just like he appeared with two of his angels whoop, onto Abraham and Sarah in the Old Testament. Okay? Before Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. See? And while God was manifest in the flesh, uh, you know, the Godhead, okay, okay, he was on earth. He didn't leave heaven. Okay, he didn't leave heaven. No, no. Great is the mystery, mystery of godliness. See, people like to, well, how can God be on earth and God be in heaven? Okay, how? God is a lot bigger than we are. Okay, he really is. Okay, but see, he was manifest in the flesh and dwelt among man. But yet he never left heaven. But yet he was right there. How is that? See, the soul. When our Lord says, my father is greater than I, he's talking about the soul, okay? He's talking about the soul of the Godhead, all right? And the only way that man could see God is if he was in a form that man could see him in, okay? This is actually pretty simple. This is actually pretty simple. When, when, you, when you rightly divide it, okay, <laughs> and when you look at it, but now go to John chapter 20, okay? John chapter 20. Yes, God can just appear and disappear. So that man who wrestled with uh, Jacob, where was he? He just appeared because God can do that. John chapter 20, verses 26 onto verse 29. Hmm. And after eight days, and after eight days again, his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut. What, did he crawl through a window? Doesn't say that. But it specifically says the doors were shut. And remember, we already looked about how their eyes were open. It's like, whoa, that's the Lord. And boom, he disappears. Just like nothing. And he appeared at will. Or at uh, uh, Peter, James, John, whatever. Smart Alex's. <laughs> I love you, brother. But uh, he appeared. Just poop. Like that. In his resurrected form, by the way. Okay? And after eight days again, his disciples were within. 
and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, goes right for Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and reach, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. Um, Thomas was a Jew, a Hebrew. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22. The Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. So Thomas said later, unless I put my hands in the print of the nails, I will not believe. Because he was a Jew, a Hebrew, he required a sign. So the Lord did that. Hey, here's your sign. Put your hand in there. Here, come on. Put your hand in there. And we have no testimony in Scripture that Thomas actually did that, do we? What does verse 28 say? And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Okay, now this is after the death, burial, and resurrection. Thomas was a Jew, okay? Here's a conundrum for those of you out there who have claimed to have seen it, that you have seen God, that God, you take and manipulate Scripture to prove or to justify your lunacy. Here's a conundrum for you. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, a Jew who required a sign. Because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. You're part of the esoteric. God, God doesn't do that for everybody. He just does it unto certain select people who, 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 they, who hear him audibly and whatnot. And unless you hear audibly from the Lord, you're not saved. Or unless you, Nonsense, man. Nonsense. Blessed are they that have not seen. And yet, have, and yet have believed. We walk by faith, not by sight. You had to, you claim that the Lord appeared to you. Hence you're a Christian now. And you're not a Jew. Hmm? You're not uh, being given new revelation of a hidden book in Scripture that's supposed to be added to a canon of Scripture or something. No. No, dear friend. You're deceived. You have not seen the Lord. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. But yet God had to appear to you and you're not a Jew. No. You have not seen God, my friend. You have not seen the Lord. You have not seen the Lord, not at all. Now, what about the dispensation under the law? Okay. Jacob wrestled with God. Abraham saw God. Adam and Eve saw God. Okay. Jacob wrestled with God. Saw him face to face. But yet, he didn't die. Why? Because God appeared in the form of a man. So he could appear unto these people. I know about Job. I know. And about Moses. Don't worry. We're going to get to that. Okay. But he appears in a form that man can behold him and not die. Okay, the angel of the Lord, stuff like that. Okay, the angel of the Lord, which is the appearance of a man, not a woman. You're deceived, dear friend. You are greatly deceived. And all of you who fall for these charismatic doctrines of devils, they have seen nothing. Oh, they have seen something, but they haven't seen the God of the scriptures. No, they have not. Go to Exodus chapter 33. Exodus chapter 33. Exodus chapter 33, verses 18 on to verse 23. Exodus chapter 33, verses 18 on to verse uh, 23. Now, this is after the debacle of the golden calf and Moses is in pleading the Lord, have mercy on your people and whatnot. That's the backstory. Verses 18 on to verse 23 in Exodus 33. And he said, Moses, unto the Lord, I beseech thee, shew me thy glory. And he said, 
I will make all my goodness pass before thee. And will pro proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and will be and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will shew mercy on whom I will shew mercy. You want a very good uh, definition of scriptural grace? It's right there. It even has gracious listed there. I will, I will do what I will do. God created you. God created all this. Why? Because of His good pleasure. Because He wanted to. Okay. God's grace is the greater showing unmerited favor onto the lesser. But you're not the lesser if God appeared to you and all us other uh, blokes have just the common salvation. Yeah. Yeah. Verse 20. And he said, Thou canst not see my face. For there shall no man see me and live. Okay, now we've already looked at it. People saw God. And, and Jacob saw God face to face. But yet he lived. He didn't die. You know, and you got Manoah. You got the things in the judges. Okay, Gideon and Manoah and stuff like that. But yet he says right here. He says right here. Verse 20, and said, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. But yet people saw God and lived. How, how is that? See, great is the mystery of godliness. God has a spirit. God has a soul. God has a body. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Okay? One. All right? So, in order to see God... A physical in a physical form or a form of some sort it is in a form that man could see him in because he just said here because God's word does not contradict okay in order for a man to see God he had to be in a form of either a man or like in the whirlwind which was another dispensation okay doesn't happen today all right okay those of you guys out there who believe this charismatic nonsense that you've seen God what what about Fatima, huh? <laughs> Come on now. Fatima. Where uh, the Virgin Mary appeared. Oh, well, that's Satan. Who do you think you saw? You did not see the God of the Scriptures. <clears throat> anyway, let's continue. Verse 21. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock. And it shall come to pass, while my glory passeth by, that, I'll put, that I will put thee in a cliff of the rock, and will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. Boy, that one must have been a really small hand then, wasn't it? Hmm? See, and I will take away mine hand, and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. Hmm. See, so what Moses was about to see was exactly that. God, not in the form of a man or in any other form, but his purest sight. That's why he said he couldn't see my face. And any man see me, uh, my face or whatever. Uh, what does it say in verse 20? And he said, thou canst not see my face. For there shall no man see me and live. Okay. But people could behold the face of Jesus Christ. In the kingdom of heaven, you're going to behold the face of Jesus Christ. In eternity, you're going to behold the face of Jesus Christ. Okay? Okay? But this, the Jews require a sign. Oh, Moses was a Jew, a Hebrew of the Hebrews. Okay? Cry her to sign. Show me thy glory. Give me a token to show that you're with us. So God appeared, uh, gave Moses this sight, this rare sight, as a sign. And you're not Jewish. You're not an apostle. You're not being revealed, given revelation of an unknown book to be added to the canon of Scripture. You haven't seen anything, man. You, you have seen something, but nothing of God. Now, uh, Exodus 34, verses 1 and verse 8 now. And the Lord said unto Moses, Hew thee two tables of stone like unto the first, 
and I will write upon these tables the words that were in the first tables, which thou breakest. And be ready in the morning, and come up in the morning unto Mount Sinai, and present thyself there to me in the top of the mount. And no man shall come up with thee, neither let any man be seen throughout all the mount. Neither let the flocks nor herds feed before that mount. And he hewed two tables of stone like unto the first. And Moses rose up early in the morning, and went up in unto Mount Sinai, as the Lord had commanded him, and took in his hand the two tables of stone. And the Lord descended in a cloud, and stood with him there, and proclaimed the name of the Lord. So the Lord descended in a cloud, and stood with him there. Okay? And the Lord passed by before him, and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering, and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and to the fourth generation. And Moses made haste and bowed his head toward the earth and worshipped. So Moses was given a sight. Look at this, verse 9. And he said, If now I have found grace in thy sight, O Lord, let my Lord, I pray thee, go among, among us. For it is a stiff-necked people, and pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take, for, take us for thine inheritance. See, he did that for Moses for a sign, okay? He saw the back parts of God standing before the Lord, okay? Couldn't see his face and live, but yet Jacob saw him face to face. Moses saw the purest form of God, okay? Not in the form of a man or in the whirlwind or something. And it was so pure, so holy, that his own eyes couldn't, be, uh, couldn't see that. That's why he said in verse 20. But yet, it's not a contradiction. Because people will say, okay, verse 20 in Exodus 33 says, And he said that thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. And you can make the argument that, yeah, okay, Adam and Eve, it doesn't say anything about his face, they saw his face, or even with Abraham. But when it came to Jacob, he saw God face to face. And people beheld the face of Jesus Christ. See? Is this making sense to you? I hope it is. I hope it is. I hope it is. And you got to remember, God is a spirit. God is a spirit. Okay? Yes, he is. A spirit. So you can distinguish between either or. What spirit appeared to you, I wonder? All these charismatics. I have seen, I have seen, I have dreamed a dream. That Todd Bentley guy, uh, if you don't know who he is, thank you. Thank the Lord. He said that Jesus appeared to him as a firefighter. And of course, Dopeland and all these guys, the Lord appeared to him. And uh, there was that one guy who appeared to the, some cell evangelist guy, said for him to build a college. And he was like over 600 feet tall or something like that. Give me a break. These people have not seen God. People. They have not seen God. You have not seen the Lord, dear friend. Now go to John chapter 14. John chapter 14, verses 1 on to verse 11. John chapter 14, verses 1 on to verse 11. The next video, Lord willing, after this video, we will be doing a light expository on John chapter 14. Because there is a portion in John well, it is John chapter 14? Yes, there is a portion in John chapter 14 that these charismatics take out of context to justify themselves. And it's, it's insane. But that's for the next video. We're going to have that. But today, John chapter 14, verses 1 on to verse 11. Now with what we've already looked at and explained. John chapter 14, verses 1 on to verse 11. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. 
In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place, uh, go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas, Thomas, saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Yeah, because no man could see him and live. Okay? No one could see the face of the Father and live. But yet you could behold the face of Jesus Christ. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Jesus is the Father. But yet no man can see God and live. God had God appeared in the form of a man in the Old Testament and could come and go, come and go, like we've already given an example of, okay, in his resurrected form. He disappeared. He vanished before their eyes. He appeared to the brethren when the doors were shut, okay? When he wrestled with Jacob, he appeared in the form of a man, just boop, appeared out of nowhere. He's God. He can do that, okay? But, verse 8, Philip saith unto him, Lord, shew us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Shew us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The Word became flesh. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? The Father in me, the soul of the Godhead. Hence, had you seen the face of Jesus Christ, you're seeing the face of the Father because the soul of the Godhead. Okay? He is the Father. <laughs> Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? And if it were the satanic, rotten, rank trinity, boy, Jesus would be a pretty crowded person, wouldn't he? Trinity is satanic and heresy, by the way, okay? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. One could behold the face of Jesus Christ and see the Father. But yet, in Exodus chapter 33, he said, No man can see my face and live. But Jacob wrestled with God, and people beheld the face of the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because he appeared unto man in a form that man is able to see him in. And with the exception unto Moses, who was a Hebrew, a Jew, for a sign unto him, he made exception. But still didn't see his face, did he? No, he didn't. No, he didn't. Mm. Now, Go to John chapter 5, or Joshua chapter 5. Joshua chapter 5. Okay? Joshua chapter 5. You might be thinking about why we haven't looked at Exodus chapter 3. There's a purpose. Joshua, where are you going, Brad? Joshua chapter 5. Verses 13 on to verse 15. Joshua chapter 5, verses 13 on to verse 15. Joshua saw the Lord, saw God. Really? Under the dispensation of the law, just like Moses, under the dispensation of the law, okay? Uh, Joshua chapter 5, verses 13 on to verse 15. Joshua, a Hebrew, a Jew. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and looked. And behold, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. 
And Joshua went unto him, and said unto him, Art thou for us, or for our adversaries? And he said, Nay. But as the captain of the host, but as the, but as captain, excuse me, of the host of the Lord, am I now come. As captain. The form which our Lord was appearing to unto Joshua. See. And doth not our Lord Jesus Christ, when he come back with us, coming back at the head of the armies that come from heaven? Mm -hmm. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship. Now, if this was an angel, uh, we are told specifically in the scriptures not to worship angels. Okay? You know, uh, uh, John, uh, John fell down at the foot of one angel and the angel said, Hey, oh, see that thou do it not. Worship God. I am of thy fellow brethren, or of thy fellow servants. Worship God. Okay? We're not to worship angels. Like so many, those, these poor charismatics, brethren, they're worshiping angels. Yeah, they're worshiping angels. Um, angels that are in league with Satan. And some of them are worshiping the anointed cherub, who is Satan, who appears as an angel of light. We're not supposed to worship angels? And he said, Nay, verse 14 again, But as captain of the host of the Lord am I now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth, and did worship, and said unto him, What saith my Lord unto his servant? And the captain of the Lord's, Lord's host said unto Joshua, Lose thy shoe from off thy foot, for the place whereon thy, thou standest is holy. And Joshua did so. Now you might be saying about verse 14, when he says, "My Lord, say, What saith my Lord? It's a lowercase l. Okay? But what do you do with verse 15? And the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, Lose thy shoe from off thy foot, for the place whereon thou standest is holy. And Joshua did so. You know, there's another time when this happened in Scripture. Exodus chapter 3. Well, twice. Twice in Scripture. Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 6. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked and behold, the bush burned with fire and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. And we can go off on quite a bit on uh, him turning aside, but we won't, okay? And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not nigh hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. It was made holy by the presence of the Lord that was there appearing to him in a bush. It was holy ground as the angel, uh, as not as the angel, but as the captain of the host of the Lord who appeared unto Joshua. That person, who that person was, you know, that uh, guy that was the Lord that appeared to Joshua. Okay? Because he told Joshua to take off the shoes off your feet for the ground that you stand on is holy because of the presence of the Lord that was right there. That was God who Joshua saw. Okay. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face for he was afraid to look upon God. So Moses saw God. Joshua saw God. Yeah. And, and like I said, we can go into the book of Judges. And also there's a reference in Isaiah chapter 6, how he saw the Lord on the temple, eh, on the throne. And we also have that in Daniel. So yes, within the dispensation of the law, yes, man saw God. In the form of a man, the 
whirlwind, which is in, which coincides in the time of the patriarchs, yes. The flame of a bush, yes. God made appearances unto man in the form of a man or in some other form unto man that man could behold the him. Okay? In the dispensation, the first dispensation in the Garden of Eden appeared unto Adam and Eve. Second dispensation, he appeared unto Abraham and unto Sarah and unto Jacob at least. Okay? In the third dispensation, he appeared unto Moses. He appeared unto Joshua. Yes. Yes. Now, the fourth dispensation, which is this dispensation today. When Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, God manifest in the flesh, that was still doctrinally the Old Testament. Why? Because the law was, we already looked in Galatians chapter 4, the law was still binding until the perfect sacrifice for sins was made. Okay? Hence, still under the law. Okay? But in this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, God did appear to people. Yes, he did. So, Brad, you're saying it's... <laughs> Let's look at this, okay? Let's look at this. Let's look at this. Dear friend, dear, dear friend, you have to remember, the book of Acts... Oh, that's me being prideful, right? Yeah, get over your esoteric nonsense about how you've seen the Lord. Okay, thank you very much. The book of Acts is, an, is a book of transition. Okay, transitioning from one onto the other. Okay, you have to remember that. God made certain, ex, uh, certain things for certain circumstances for certain reasons, which are not applicable for today. Right now, after they happened. We're going to look at that, okay? Because after the death, burial, and resurrection, whoom, that's this dispensation today, the time of the Gentiles. That's this dispensation currently which you and I are in. Yes. And God did appear to people for specific reasons, which he has not duplicated or will not duplicate. And if he does, dear friend, I've seen it. No, you haven't. Because if... If it is as you say, and you go and play gymnastics with the scriptures, then he's doing contrary to his word. Because the book of Acts is a book of transition, just like the book of Joshua is, just like the book of Exodus is. Okay? A book of transition. Also similar, the book of Hebrews. Okay? Books of transition. Okay? Okay? You got to be careful. But there were sp specific reasons. Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. After the death, burial, and resurrection. This dispensation. God appeared unto somebody. Three we're going to look at. Specifically. These are the only ones I've mentioned. Oh, and, and let's not forget John the Revelator, as they like to call him. That right there, that one was like, Dude, dude, that's, wait a minute, time, whoa, time out. There's something wrong here. There's something wrong here. Okay. Acts chapter 9, verses 1 on to verse 9. God appeared unto somebody. Who? And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus to, to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. Oh, you saw a light. I'm sure you did, yeah. And he fell to the earth, and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the men which stood 
And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. They heard a voice, but they didn't see a man. But Paul did. So we learn right here that it is possible for the Lord to appear to one who is in the presence of others, but yet only that one see him and the others not? Hmm. Really? God can do that. Yeah. Let's continue. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand and brought him to, into Damascus. And he was three days without sight, neither did eat nor drink. And Paul would go, uh, Paul, he would become Paul, would go on to say that he had seen the Lord and stuff like that. Okay? All right? Paul saw the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul saw God. Okay? Yes, he did. He appeared unto Paul. Well, why? Why did he appear unto Paul? Huh? 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22. The Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. And about that, um, go to Philippians chapter 3. Okay? Philippians chapter 3. Verses 4 and 6. Verses 4 on to verse 6. Paul talking about his pedigree before the, he, the Lord appeared unto him. Why? Because Philippians 3 verses 4 on to verse 6. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I am more circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee. Hebrew of the Hebrews. Yeah. Concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. Hebrew of the Hebrews. Paul himself says, yeah, I was a Hebrew of the Hebrews. So, Paul, who is a Hebrew, a Jew, uh, what does that say here? as touching the law, a Pharisee. So he was one who practiced the law. So he was a Hebrew of the Hebraic line that stemmed from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he was a Jew uh, holding the law. So he was a Jew. And the Jews require a sign? So the Lord appeared on to Paul, who would have gone on ravishing the church, the church of God, which is the church of the living God. He would have gone on creating havoc had the Lord appeared unto him. So see, Paul, who is the apostle unto us Gentiles, Paul, a Hebrew of the Hebrew, was required of the, to see a sign. So the Lord appeared unto him. So Saul, who had become Paul, had no doubt. No doubt. See, the Jews require a sign. Are you a Jew? Hmm. Yeah. Uh, go to Acts now, chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. Okay. Why did the Lord appear on Paul? Number one, Jews require a sign. Paul was a Hebrew of the Hebrews. And unless uh, you cannot justly argue that unless the Lord had done that, uh, he probably would have gone on doing what he was doing. Let's see. He did it for a specific purpose. God appeared unto Paul, who was Saul, who would become Paul, for a specific purpose. What was that purpose? To show him that, hey, I'm God, number one, because the Jews require a sign. And there was a second reason. Acts chapter 1, verses 15 on to verse 26. In those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, The number of names together were about 120. Men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas, which was guide to them that took Jesus, for he was numbered with us and had obtained part of this ministry. Now this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity, and falling headlong, he burst asunder in the mist, and all his bowels gushed out. And it was known unto all the dwellers at Jerusalem, insomuch as he as 
that field is called in their proper tongue a cladoma, that is to say, the field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, let his habitation be desolate, and let no man dwell therein, and his bishopric let another take. Wherefore of these men, now pay attention to this, wherefore of these men which have companied with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out amongst us, among us, excuse me, beginning from the baptism of John, unto that same day that he was taken up from us, must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. Key verse right there. A witness of his resurrection. Okay? And he appeared to Paul. Hey, the resurrected Lord appeared unto Paul at that time who was Saul. He would become Paul. Okay? Let's continue. And they appointed two. Joseph called Barsabbas, who was surnamed Justus, and Matthias, they, the, the disciples and the apostles, they did. Hey, hey, uh, verse 22, one must be ordained, must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection, because there are 12 apostles, not 13 technically, 12, okay? But they chose, and they appointed two. Let's continue. And they prayed and said, Thou, Lord, which knowest the hearts of all men, shew whether of these two thou hast chosen. <laughs> they had good meaning intentions. Their hearts were in the right place. But do you already see the problem? I hope you do. They gave the choice unto the Lord. Lord, these are who we pick out. You choose one between whom we chose for you. Do you see that? Look, don't look at me. Look at the text. They gave, here, Lord, this is what we want you to do. This is what we, their hearts were in the right place. There, they were. Hey, someone had to be ordained to take the place of Judas. It's the 12th apostle. Yes. But they appointed. Hmm. Verse 25. That he may take part of this ministry and apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell. Hence, 11. Okay? That he might go to his own place. And they gave forth their lots, and the lot fell upon Matthias. And he was numbered with the 11 apostles. So... That's, that's the twelfth apostle. And so technically, we got 14 because Judas and it... You know, just getting a little... Heavy. Revelation 21. Okay, that, that is a pet peeve of mine. And this is problematic with you charismatics out there. Well, there was technically... No, there wasn't. Well, yes, there was No, there wasn't. What's that? The scripture. Okay. What says the scripture? That is our standard, not your emotionalism, not your feelings, not that you've seen it. This is our uh, standard. Uh, Revelation 21, verse 14, just one verse, okay? Uh, Revelation 21, verse 14. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations, and in them the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Oh, 13, right? Well, actually, th no, it says 12. There were only 12 apostles chosen of God, the Lamb. See, what Acts chapter 1 here, verses 15 on to verse 26, shows us something. There are only 12 apostles. None of this nonsense, well, there's technically a 13. And no, we just saw in Revelation 21, verse 14, the Lord only counts 12. Okay? And of Matthias, you hear absolutely nothing of Matthias after this. Of, of course, there is the Deuterocanical Catholic apocryphal book, the, what is it, the Gospel of Matthias or something like that? Of course, of course, leave it to Satan's church, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, for them to come up with such nonsense like that, of course. But scripturally, what became of Matthias? 
we see two things here. One, that there are to be 12 apostles. Two, that there are apostles made of men. There are actual apostles. Then there are these false apostles made by men. Because there are only 12 apostles and we just looked at it. There are only 12 apostles recognized of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we just read that Judas fell from, uh, from that position by transgression. Okay? So there are only 12 apostles. The other apostles, these, these charismatics, man, apostles, so-and-so, chosen by men, uh, and, cho and chosen by the little G-God of this world, whom you people who have claimed to have seen God, that's who you've seen. You have not seen the God of the scriptures. You have seen the devil. And you're part of that esoteric crowd. God help you, man. God help you. May he, may he rescue you from that lunacy. I pray he does. I pray he does. Okay? But, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Who is the 12th apostle? It was Paul. Paul was a Hebrew of the Hebrews. The Lord gave him a sign. Hey, appear to him. Okay? Appear to him. But the Lord's choice was not Matthias. That's who man chose. That's who they chose. But whom the Lord chose to replace Judas was Paul. And a lot of people dispute that. And then you run it. Well, there were technically 13. No. Judas fell. Hence, Judas is erased. The 12th apostle was Paul. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 on to verse 10. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I have preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. And that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. After that, he was seen. Now he's talking about uh, how he was seen of the twelve apostles and whatnot. After that, he was seen of above. After that, after what? Death, burial, and resurrection. Okay. After that, he was seen of above 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. And after that he was seen of James, and of all the apostles. And last of all, and last of all, he was seen of me also, as of one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles, and, and that am not meet to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the Christians, excuse me, the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. So, you see, dear friend, a scriptural apostle, an apostle of the Lord, has two things in common. They saw the Lord with their own eyes as the 12 apostles before Paul. Of course, uh, Judas also saw the Lord. Of course, of course, yeah, yeah. Many people saw the Lord. But see, an actual apostle, which was chosen of the Lord, okay? Number one, they all saw him. Many people saw the Lord Jesus Christ, but he didn't handpick 12 of them to be apostles. And that's the second qualification. Personally handpicked, as was Paul which we just looked at in Acts chapter 9, which is why the Lord appeared to him first for a sign to show him, hey, I'm Jesus who you persecute. And number two, to appoint him as an apostle. Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6. Okay? The scriptural qualifications to be an apostle. 
There are apostles today. Yes, they're chosen by men, not of God. An apostle of the Lord, of the Lamb, all saw the Lord with their own eyes and were personally picked by him to be an apostle. Luke chapter 6, verses 12 on to verse 18. And it came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. And when it was day, he called unto him his disciples, and of them he chose twelve, whom also he named apostles. So they all saw the Lord. Many saw the Lord. Okay, yeah, that was a qualification to actually see the Lord. Yes. So you've seen the Lord. You're an apostle? I don't think so. You're a liar. You're deceived or you're a deceiver. Which one is it? There's only two. There is no option C. Okay, but they saw the Lord. And what does that say? And of them, of them, of the disciples, he chose 12 and picked them. Okay, let's read. 14. Shimon, whom he also surnamed Peter, and Andrew his brother, James and John, Philip and Bartholomew, Matthew and Thomas, James the son of Alphaeus, and Shimon called Zelotes, and Judas the brother of James, and Judas Iscariot, which also was the traitor. Traitor. And about that, about that, let, oh, let's continue. And he came down with them and stood in the plain. Uh, wait, wait, no, we don't need to. Oh, um, uh, yeah, let's, let's read that. And he came down with them and stood in the plain and the company of his disciples and a great multitude of people and, uh, and people out of all Judea and Jerusalem. See, many people saw the Lord Jesus Christ and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon, which came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And they that were vexed with unclean spirits, and, and they that were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed. And as we read, he gave power unto uh, the apostles and stuff like that to heal for signs and wonders and stuff, especially like in the book of Acts. But we looked at that specifically because a scriptural apostle, one chosen by the Lord, see the Lord, and he handpicked them. That's the qualification for a scriptural apostle. So if, if the Lord, but then if the Lord is appearing only to the es esoteric, you know, elitist crowd out there who get the privilege above the common salvation, oh, that must mean that you're an apostle, huh? Or giving, being given, get over yourself, man. <laughs> and I'm, and yeah, I'm in pride, huh? Yeah, 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 I don't think so, dear friend. I don't think so. And of course, John chapter 6. John chapter 6. Verse 70 on to verse 71. Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? He spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Shimon. For he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. And people ask, well, why did he choose Iscariot there? I believe. To show that people that you bring into your close circle will betray you. Spread lies and slander. Try to slander a brother. Trying to open a door by planting a seed of doubt amongst the brethren. It's like, what is this that you're saying about brother so-and-so? So people can turn to you. So you can slander a brother. Yeah. Yeah. You ain't as wise as you think you are there, kiddo. Yeah. Yeah. Now, let's go to the big one. Now, see, okay? In this dispensation, the Lord appeared unto Paul for a sign and to confirm to him that he is going to be the 12th apostle, the replacement for Judas. But he was a Jew. But what, what are you sitting there seething about, you charismatics? What about Cornelius? He wasn't a Jew. And the Lord appeared to him. Let's look at that. Well, you think, well, you didn't think we were going there, did you? <laughs> yeah. Acts chapter 10. Now, we're not going to read this entire chapter. Okay? We're not. But Acts chapter 10, 
verses 1 on to verse 6. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. This man was obviously a Gentile. Okay? And we'll see evidence of this as we continue. He saw a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius, so an angel of God, the Lord appeared unto Cornelius. Prove it? Okay. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it? Or? Now hold on. Now, you can make the argument like, well, he said Lord as a, to a mean of respect, like, you know, instead of calling like uh, brethren who I contact and sisters, I use a capital S instead of their name. It's like, hey, brother, and I use a capital B also because that's something I do. Uh, no, 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 no. And even you charismatics are going to, you have to agree with this to justify yourself. Okay. But. An angel of God. And the Cornelius calls him Lord. You can't get away from that capital L. We can't get away from it. Cornelius, the Lord appeared to Cornelius. It's evident. You're we what do you do with the capital L? Ignore it? No. No, we can't. The Lord appeared unto Cornelius. And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine alms are come up for a memorial before God. A memorial. And now, send men to Joppa, and call for one Shimon, whose surname is Peter. He lodgeth with one Shimon a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. Okay? So, so, God appeared unto Cornelius. Now, go, go to Acts chapter 15. Acts chapter 15. Oh, no, excuse me. Yeah, Acts chapter 15, verses 18 on to verse 21. Acts chapter 15, verses 18 on to verse 21. Okay, you might be saying, well, he, okay, he did alms, and it says here, uh, verse 3, uh, or verse 4. And he looked on him and was afraid and said, in, ver, in Acts chapter 10, And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine alms are come up for a memorial before God. Okay? So this Cornelius obviously had heard what? The way to worship God according to the law in the, in the other dispensation. Acts chapter 15, verses 18 on to verse 21. Known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. Wherefore my sentence is that we trouble not them, which from the Gentiles are turned to God, but that we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols and from fornication and from things strangled and from blood. Verse 21 is key here. For Moses of old time hath in, hath in every city them that preach him being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. Key, key, okay? Because before Peter was sent unto Cornelius to show him, to reveal unto him the way of the gospel that is for today in this dispensation, the only way to be saved known to most people before the, uh, the apostles went out to declare the way of salvation in this dispensation was that of the law. So Cornelius, obviously, because we just looked in verse 21 in Acts 15, Moses was preached all over. So Cornelius was what? A devout man and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. A Gentile trying to observing the ways of the law because he thought that is what it took to be right with God. And it did in the dispensation under the law. But now, this being this present dispensation, so see, that explains the memorial because 
Cornelius was doing only what he knew of how it was to worship God because that was given on to the Jews. And the Jews in Acts chapter 15, the Judaizers like, well, we got to get them circumcised and they got to keep the law of Moses in order to stay saved. And that's not the case for today to the Jew first and also to the Gentiles. See, see that this is a book of transition, dear friend. That's why you create great error and great lunacy within yourself if you base your stuff off primarily the book of Acts. Because it's a book of transition. Okay? Okay? You, you get this? Okay? And now go also to Acts chapter 18. Acts chapter 18, verses 24 and 25. Okay? Verses 24 and 25 in Acts chapter 18. Okay? Another example, who only knew of the Old Testament way under the law, okay? Cornelius, a Gentile, he only heard what he heard from the synagogues and from the Jews. It's like, okay, I, okay, you're, you're God. I want to be right with you. So he did what was under the law, not being a Jew. So the Lord sends on to him Peter. It's like, hey, hey, it's not that way anymore, okay? But uh, another person who was going off of only what they knew before they heard of the death, burial, and resurrection. Uh, Acts chapter 18, verses 24 and uh, 25. And a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria. Could be a warning. Could be. Not saying it is. Apollos is mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Okay. Referred to as a minister. Yes, but it came from Alexandria, Egypt, where your Bibles come from, not Syria. This one comes from Syria. Thank you. Let's continue. Okay. An eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures came to Ephesus. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord and being fervent in spirit. He spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord knowing only the baptism of John. He didn't know about the death, burial, and resurrection, but knowing only the baptism of John. And of course, uh, Priscilla and Aquila take him aside, take this mighty man, eloquent and mighty in the scriptures. Uh, hey, hey, come here, man. Um, that, that, that's good, but that's not how it is now. Let's, let me talk to you. You know, remember the Phil, uh, Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch? Okay, okay. So, Cornelius was going off of only what he had known at that time before the Lord appeared to him and told him. And notice the Lord appeared to him and didn't reveal unto Cornelius how it was, but said to him, call for a Shimon, whose surname is Peter. Okay? The Lord was doing him. This was an extraordinary circumstance which has not and will not be repeated. Okay? Well, God appeared to Cornelius for a specific purpose. Let's continue now, okay? Now we're skipping in Acts chapter 10. Beg your pardon, brethren. All right. Now we're skipping to verses 10 on to verse 20 in Acts chapter 10. Now Peter, this is Peter, who the Lord told Cornelius to send people for, okay? Peter, beginning at verse 10. And he became very hungry and would have eaten. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance. We've discussed this before in other videos. They'll be in the description box. And saw heaven open, and a certain vessel descending onto him, as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners and let down to the earth, wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spake unto him again the second time, What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. This was done thrice, and the vessel was received up again into heaven. Thrice. He did not deny the Lord three times after the death burial, death, burial, and resurrection. He said unto Peter, Shimon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He did it three times. Again, three times. The Jews require a sign. Okay, let's continue. Now, while Peter doubted in himself what this vision which, what this vision which he had seen should mean, behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius 
had made in inquiry for Shimon's house and stood before the gate and called and asked whether Shimon, which was surnamed Peter, were lodged there. While Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit, capital S, the Lord, said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Arise therefore and get thee down and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Okay? Now, for this, for this, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, okay? Made several references onto this. Now let's look at it. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. First, not Romans, Brad. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 20 on to verse 24. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness. And see, Saul needed to had needed a sign. He's a Hebrew of the Hebrew. He didn't need it, but there again, the Lord gave him a sign. Here, here I am. Peter, the, four, the sheet with the four uh, knit at the four corners, which is not a flat earth text, you crazies, okay? Which is not, okay? But, okay, Peter needed to see a vision in a trance. He needed a sign, okay? Let's continue. But we preach Christ crucified, unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. And Galatians chapter 2, Galatians chapter 2, 11 on to verse 16. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed. For, the, for before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. See, James and Peter struggled with the fact that us Gentiles were grafted into, their, into the tree of the Jew. And James, saved man, um, and sent his people, they were doing what was under the law, what we're about to read about, not mingling themselves amongst the Gentiles, which is not the way it is for today in this dispensation, okay? This is why Peter needed the vision, but also as we see, Peter still stumbled and made oopsies concerning that. But let's continue. For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. And the other Jews dissembled likewise with him, insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. See, this, this runs line along the whole esoteric and esoteric thing, okay? The jealousy of the Jews seeing us Gentiles grafted into their, tea, uh, into their tree. I've seen that. I've experienced it, okay? But see, that elitism was still prevalent in them. But see, that was uh, banished away salvifically because in Christ there's neither Jew nor Greek. But see, some of them struggled with it. And when the upper echelons struggled with that, others saw the example of Peter and then it's like, oh, wow. What the, uh, okay, then I guess we're just going to congregate with our own people. No, no. And what does Paul do? But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, because we're all one in Christ Jesus, okay? I said unto Peter, before them all, if thou being a Jew livest after the manner of the Gentiles and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? We who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, which they were reverting back to, okay, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. 
For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Hence, the dissimulation. Okay? Coming from James. There, the Lord had me to do a video on this a while ago. I cannot remember for the life of me which video that was, uh, that was, but where we talked about this very thing. But we looked at this because this was something that was a problem with Peter. Peter, also a Jew, needed a sign. Now go back to Acts chapter 10, okay? Acts chapter 10. Now Peter had the, the sign of the sheet given to him. And Cornelius saw the Lord. The Lord appeared to him. But the Lord didn't reveal unto Cornelius anything of the gospel, but said to go to Peter. And Peter had this vision. Why did Peter have this vision? Why were all, was all this done? Verse 28 in Acts chapter 10. And he said unto them, Ye know how that it is unlawful, how it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. And see, that's exactly what was happening in Galatians chapter 2. He reverted back to it, unfortunately, and needed to be rebuked for it. Praise the Lord. Verse, let's continue. But! God has shewed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Hmm. So the vision of the sheep and calling not, don't call that uncommon what I have cleansed and Cornelius. Why, was, why did he do all this? To show Peter exactly this. But God has shewed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Peter was a Jew. And look at the end result. Verses 44 on to verse 48. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which had heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished. Whoa. As many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. Verse 45 is why the Lord appeared unto Cornelius, a Gentile, to go to a Jew like Peter. Okay, he appeared unto the Lord. The Lord appeared unto, excuse me, unto Cornelius. So Cornelius would send Peter. Peter was given the, the, the vision of the sheet. Why? So that in verse 28, but God has shewed me that I should call should not call any man common or unclean. And then the Holy Ghost fell on them Gentiles, and then them Jews were all astonished. A sign. Verse 20, verse 46. For they heard them speak with tongues, Jews were present, and magnified God, then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord, then prayed they him to tarry certain days. So, yeah, God appeared unto Cornelius. Why? Why? To send unto Peter, who saw a vision, so that the Jews would have the sign that yes, and unto Peter, who <coughs> in the book of uh, uh, Galatians still struggled with that thing and dissembled when the, the guys from James came. He still struggled with it. Okay? But all that was done as a sign for those Jews that would see it. So, the Lord appeared unto Cornelius for this specific purpose as in the end to be a sign unto the Jews that the Gentiles had been grafted into their tree. That's why the Lord appeared unto Cornelius. It was an exception to things and done for a specific reason which is not being replicated today. Okay? It is not. It is not, okay? In the Pauline epistles, okay? We're going to look at that. 
God is not making cameo appearances to these esoteric elitists who only get the privilege above the common salvation to see God. And hence, you're a Christian now because you had to... No! No, dear friend. You have not seen the Lord. You are deceived. You have not seen the Lord. This was an extraordinary exception for a sign onto those Jews that would see it. That's why it's not being replicated today. You are greatly deceived and you are in error. Greatly deceived. All of you who think you have seen it, it, you haven't seen God. You have not seen God. No, you have not. And of course, Ephesians chapter 3. Come on. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 6. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 6. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, the apostle unto the Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. What is this mystery? Which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles, uh, his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. What is the mystery? Right here. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Hence this dispensation. Hence what Cornelius, uh, how the Lord appeared unto Cornelius for the express purpose to be a sign unto those Jews. That's why he did that within the book of Acts, which was a book of transition. Okay? It doesn't happen today. God is not making cameo appearances today onto people. Outside the common salvation, okay? You, you, oh wow, I've seen it. And I'm so humble. If you really had seen the Lord, you would keep your big mouth shut about it and never to... <laughs> Wait until that Canadian bacon get a load of that one, boy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that lying, sniveling scum uh, from Canada. And I'm not talking about the little boy or the other guy. I'm talking about a specific person from Alberta, okay? Uh, yeah, he's going to turn on you eventually, man. He's going to turn on you. You just wait. <laughs> Share with him this stuff. Woohoo! <laughs> yeah. You people who claim to have seen God, claim to have gone to heaven or hell, Psh, yeah, yeah, you have not seen God. You have not seen God. God appeared unto John, you know, the last of the apostles within this dispensation. <laughs> he appeared unto Paul in this dispensation. To appoint unto him, number one, for a sign, and to appoint him as an apostle. Scripturally, an apostle is one that has seen the Lord and handpicked by him. The Lord appeared unto Cornelius for a sign unto the Jews, unto Peter, and to those Jews that, wow, they are part of the tree of the Jew now. What about John? He appeared unto John. Fortunately, when this was told me, this was... This was the death knell. It's like, you, you, you crazy. You crazy. You crazy. Revelation chapter 1. He appeared unto John. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Who was an apostle? <laughs> okay. But why did he appear unto John? In the Isle of Patmos. It was an exception. An extreme exception. Why? Well, let's read. Revelation chapter 1, we will be reading verses 9 on to verse 20. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation, and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos, for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, 
and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and what thou seest, write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches, which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatria, and unto Sardius, and unto Philadelphia, and, and, and unto Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with the garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. He had an afro, he was of ham. And his feet were like unto fine brass. You ever seen fine brass? It's not black. It's not white. Okay? Jesus was not black. Jesus was not white. Jesus is Shemitic, a Hebrew. Okay? And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burn in the furnace and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance, his body form, was as the sun shineth in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. Yeah, and these people, we get up to heaven, we're going to bro-hug the Lord and shut up. John, who loved the Lord, who rested his head on the bosom of Jesus Christ, fell at his feet as dead. Yeah. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and death. Write the things which thou hast Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the, are the angels of the seven churches and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. So, so, oh, and John chapter 21. John, uh, John chapter 21, okay. Uh, hey, Paul appeared on John in the book of Revelation. Yeah, he sure did. Yeah. Uh, verses 24 and 25 in John, chap uh, John chapter 21. This is the disciple which testifieth of these things and wrote these things. And we know that his testimony is true. And there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written, every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. Were you reading with me from verses 9 on to verse 20 in Revelation chapter 1? The Lord appeared unto John, dear friend, to reveal to him the book of Revelation. John was the last known apostle of the Lord, the one who lived the longest, okay? So the Lord appeared unto John on the Isle of Patmos to reveal him the final book of the canon of Scripture, dear friend. You, you point to this as to justify what you've seen as being God? You have not seen God. You have not seen God, my friend. He appeared unto Paul in this dispensation for a sign and to make him an apostle. He appeared unto Cornelius as to eventually be part of a sign unto those Jews. He appeared unto John to reveal unto him the book of Revelation. Exceptions in this dispensation that heretofore, after these have been done, are not being replicated, are not being done today. Or else, why do we need the scriptures, right? Because you have advanced revelation, because you saw God. You are of that esoteric, 
in crowd, the elite, while everybody else has the common salvation. Oh, well, I don't think like that. Then you should have kept your big mouth shut and not shared it with those elect people who you think are capable or worthy of hearing that you've seen God. Get over yourself. Repent. You have not seen the Lord. You haven't. Ooh, 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 ooh. What about, what about, what about 2 Corinthians, right? Let's go to that. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Second, I used to be a charismatic, dear friend. Okay? And, uh, <laughs> yeah. This is, uh, the Lord got me out of this at the beginning. I don't know how long many of you have been saved. You claim you, and, and this right here, what we're going to, you got these twits who, oh, I've been to heaven and I saw all this stuff. Their, their stories always seem to contradict. Same with these guys who say they've gone to hell and saw their pets down there. And it, it, it's nonsense. It's nonsense. But 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 on to verse 4. Paul saw this stuff. Did he? Let's read. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 on to verse 4. It is not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. And he's speaking of himself in the third person, too. Okay? I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago. Whether in the body, I cannot tell, or whether out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. Such an one caught up to the third heaven. That's where God is. You have the sky, you have the firmament, then you have the third heaven where God is, okay? I knew such a, I knew a, such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell, God knoweth, how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words which is not lawful for a man to utter. Mm -hmm. Now, notice what he doesn't say anything about what he saw, rather that he said, come to visions and revelations, and he said only about things that he heard he's not supposed to utter. But things he saw he could speak about? See, these charismatics will look at that and say, well, that's a gray area. So that means uh, when I've been to hell, I can go ahead and talk about it and write a book and get out. No. What Paul saw up there, what he heard, he mentions about what did, what did God say? You got a re revelation from heaven because you've been up there. What did God say? But he doesn't say anything about what he saw. Why? That's a warning for us. Paul, the greatest of the church of the living God. Okay, you can make your little flaccid argument. Well, maybe Paul didn't see anything. But yet you're claiming to have seen something that is not, that doesn't happen today. Or you're claiming to go to have gone to hell and see all this stuff and come back and write a book about it. Or see the Lord and come. No, no. See, what Paul saw was so holy that it wasn't even, he didn't even dare to say anything about that, what he had saw, meaning it was like too holy for him to even touch upon it within Scripture. So did Paul see something? I, he came to visions and revelations of the Lord, okay? And it says about things he heard, because you've been there, what did God say to you? Hmm? Mm -hmm. The reason why Paul doesn't say anything about what he saw, it's not because he didn't see anything, but to show us that when you got someone coming around saying that they've been to hell or heaven, when Paul, the greatest of the church of the living God, didn't even dare to say anything about seeing anything, and then you got these... Come on there, man. <laughs> You've been to hell. No, you haven't. You've been to heaven. No, you haven't. You've seen the Lord. No, you haven't. No, you haven't. You haven't been to hell. You haven't been to heaven. You have not seen the Lord. And, you know, this, this, I was sent a video by this individual 
who um, <laughs> I thought he sent it to me to debunk it. He fell for it. He believes all of it. Wow. Now, hell, lake of fire, lake of fire, okay? Um, go to Mark chapter 9. Go to Mark chapter 9. You know, these people who said they've gone to heaven and gone to, their, their, their testimonies all conflict. Their testimonies all conflict, okay? Must be a pretty confusing place up or down, right? Yeah. Uh, Mark chapter 9. Verses 43 on to verse 48. Let's see what our Lord says about hell. Luke chapter 9, verses 43 on to verse 48. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life main than having two hands to go into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched. Fire! Fire! That shall never be quenched. Where the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched. Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Hmm. Hmm. So what is hell? Fire. Hell is fire. Hmm. Uh, Luke chapter 16 now. Huh? Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16 verses 19. Oh. <clears throat> to the close of the chapter. There was a certain man, rich man, which was clothed in purple and fine linen, and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores, and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell. Now, people, these guys like to, well, I wasn't buried, so that, shut up. Shut up. And in hell, he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue. For I am tormented in this flame. And Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Very important. Uh, once you're in hell, you're not getting out. You don't get a visit. There is no such thing as a vi We're getting to Jonah, okay? Uh, there's no visitor pass for hell. And then they come out to get a million views on YouTube and to write a book. Have these people seen something? I'm not doubting that they did. But what they saw is not of the Lord. Contradicts. Contradicts. It's foolishness. It's madness. Okay? Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. So see, someone come from, uh, from hell. Go, warn these people, right? For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't want anyone to go there. I've been there. I've seen, no, you haven't. Prove it to you. Absolutely. Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. Moses and the prophets. What does that mean? They have the scriptures. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Yes. 
So you just listening to it is good enough? No. What about searching the scriptures daily? Whether these things be so? See, how easy can you listening to it become background noise and the spirits that are tormenting you whisper uh, things in your ear? That's why you need to search the scriptures, dear friends. Okay? Be careful. Be careful. Uh, uh, yeah, they have Moses and the prophets. They have the scriptures. Let they let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, it begins with that. If you hear not the scriptures, neither will they be persuaded. The one rose from the dead. And then these charismatics, well, you don't believe that stuff. I, I, I was expecting uh, you've blasphemed the Holy Ghost to come from some of these people over this stuff. But it begins, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, where, where's Moses and the prophets? The scriptures. So if you don't hear the scriptures, the Lord, I, I'm hearing the scriptures. But you have not, none of you have gone to hell and come back or gone to heaven and come back. The white light thing is something that naturally happens apparently with some people when their brain and near death goes haywire. Okay? You haven't, you haven't been to heaven. You haven't been to hell. It contradicts. It contradicts, dear friend. Okay? And, and two, Abraham's bosom, Samuel was called up, not called down. Okay? You haven't seen heaven or hell, and you have not seen God. You have not seen God, sir. Jude 22, uh, Jude 22 and 23. Jude 22, uh, Jude, <laughs> Jude, verses 22 and 23. And of some have compassion, making a difference, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. Hell is fire. Okay? Hell is fire, dear friend. And 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 5 on to verse 7. For this they are willingly ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of water and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. And how many people died in the flood? Quite a few. How many dead are within the sea? Quite a few with all the world wars and the ships and stuff like that. Okay? We know that over a thousand with the Titanic alone, which the Jesuits sank. Okay? But the heavens and the earth which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Hmm. Really? Really? And, and, and Revelation chapter 20, Revelation chapter 20, verses 11 on to verse 15. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which are which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. How many people are dead who met their death in the sea? I would say millions. Okay? And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Yeah. But I've heard this nonsense. Well, Jonah went to hell and called on the name of... Uh, <laughs> it's not funny that someone would be so deceived and go to such lengths to justify the, their nonsense. But it's like, dude... You're serious, too. Okay? Uh, Jonah, chapter 2. 
Jonah chapter 2. Jonah chapter 2. And the word of the Lord came on. Uh, then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly. He was in the fish's belly. Okay? And said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me. And out of the belly of hell cried I, and thou heardest my voice. That's a figure of speech. Okay? Because, okay, if Jonah went to hell, and we just looked at what, what pertains to hell, fire! How do you explain this? For thou hadst cast me into the deep, in the midst of the seas, and the floods compassed me about. All thy billows and thy waves passed over me. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight, yet I will look again toward thy holy temple. The waters compassed me about, the waters, even to the soul. The depth closed me round about. The weeds were wrapped about, about my head. I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. The earth with her bars was about me forever. Yet thou brought up my life from corruption, O Lord my God. He was in the uh, the belly of the fish, and I believe he was you know, supernaturally preserved. Why? Jonah was what? A Hebrew, a Jew? And the Lord told him to, to go preach unto his enemies, the Gentiles of Nineveh? But he said, I ain't doing it. Lord said, yes, you are. So the Lord went through this dramatic thing for a Jew who needed a sign to go do what the Lord had said. And you're going to use this as a, an, a way to circumvent that people can go to hell and like Jonah cried out of the belly uh, of hell and got out of hell? Then what's pre preventing the people that are in hell right now from crying out? Nonsense! Nonsense, boy! Oh. <clears throat> when my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord and my prayer came in unto thee into thine holy temple. They that observe lying vanities, dear friends, forsake their own mercy, but I will sacrifice on to thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed that salvation is of the Lord. And the Lord spake unto the fish and it vomited Jonah upon vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. Yeah, uh, the Lord did this for a sign unto Jonah. Okay, because the Jews require a sign. The Lord said for him to go to preach to the Ninevites. Jonah said, uh-uh. God, uh, you know, in the ship did the things with the wave. They threw him out and the fish came and gobbled him up. And the fish going up and down and that kind of stuff. Um, what we saw referenced in hell, dear friend, of hell in the scriptures, you don't see any of that within Jonah chapter 2. What do you do with that? Oh, but Jonah was... A, no, no, no. <laughs> You're fetching at straws, taking things out of, disp uh, out of dispensation and trying to apply them for today. This was an extraordinary circumstance. Jonah was a Jew. Are you a Jew? Hmm? Are you Jewish? Is the Lord revealing to you a hidden book of Scripture? No. No, no, dear friend. Second Corinthians chapter five. Second Corinthians chapter five. Verses five on to verse eight. Now he that wrought, now he that hath wrought us for the self same thing as God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. But yet, even after the Lord apparently saved you, he still appeared unto you to strengthen. No. Blessed are they that believe and have not seen. You're not a Jew, are you? You're not being, he's not giving to you uh, another book for the scriptures. God forbid. No. We walk by faith. Not by sight. If the whole of who you are as a Christian is based upon what you've seen, you're not walking by faith. Your faith is predicated upon what you have seen. That ain't faith. Are you saved? I wonder. 
<clears throat> we are, uh, yeah, uh, where, excuse me, verse 8. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. If you are only revealing onto certain people who you think can handle the truth that you've seen the Lord, uh, no, you haven't seen the Lord. You haven't seen the Lord. Romans chapter 10, just one verse, verse 17. Romans chapter 10, verse 17, one verse, already kind of touched on this. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Yeah, so all some of these people do is just listen to the scriptures and never pick up. And yeah, I'm kicking this again. I'm in pride, right? <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, all they do is listen to the scriptures, but don't pick up the scriptures to do what Acts chapter 17 does. Thank you, Lord. Verse 11, Acts 17, verse 11. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that, they re in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. See, yeah, yeah, it's good to listen to the scriptures, but if that's all you're doing, how easy can the scriptures being heard by the beloved Alexander Scorby, how easy can that be turned into background noise while your attention is diverted on something else. Hey, listen to the scriptures, but follow along in the scriptures, okay? When we listen to the scriptures, we got the scriptures right there uh, following along, okay? Oh, so that makes me in pride, right? No, that's what we're supposed to do. How easy can something that you're hearing constantly become background noise to you unless you're actually uh, actively searching the scriptures daily whether these things be so come on man come on man and Romans chapter 8 verses 24 on to verse 25 for we are saved and thank you brother for this for we are saved by hope but hope that is seen is not hope for what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? <laughs> come, come on. Come on. What's wrong with you? Come on. <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> oh, verse 25. But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Hope that is seen is not hope. What did our Lord say in John chapter 20, verse 29? Huh? Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. So, in that respect, uh, you're the lesser because God had to appear unto you to prove that he's... You see what kind of trouble and confusion you get yourself into? Uh. And of course, 1 Timothy chapter 1, just one verse, the very first verse in uh, Timothy, okay? 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 1. Thank you, brother. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God, our Savior, and Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope. But yet hope that is seen is not hope. You see, you claiming that you have seen the Lord contradicts just this, dear friend. And you haven't seen the Lord. Now, these verses uh, that we just read just now are going to be repeated in the next video coming, but you, you'll see. But you haven't seen the Lord. People, beware of these people who are telling you, number one, that God came to them in a dream, that God spoke to them audibly. Can that happen? Can that happen? Can a God speak to you audibly? 
Well, how would you discern which one is which? The God of this world or the God who is? Hmm? How would you discern? Hmm? You want to hear God speak? Uh, read the scriptures out loud like we do. Oh, that must I'm being prideful by saying that. Excuse me. Read the scriptures out loud. That way, when you're speaking, reading the word, the Lord can captivate you by your own voice. Like, whoa, you know? Brethren, in these last days, you got all these people coming around. You, you just look at them here on YouTube, these charismatics. Uh, I have seen, I have dreamed, God appeared to me. No. And I realize that those of you out there who are in your pride, you know, you're of the esoteric, the elite, who only get this privilege to see God, well, everybody, get out, get over yourself. I know you people aren't going to make it through this. But somebody got to tell you, because the whatever it is that is speaking to you can show you truth. Yes, but if your faith is based off of what you've seen, it's contrary to Scripture. You haven't seen God. You haven't been to hell and come back. You haven't gone to heaven and come back. Okay? God does not work that way in this dispensation. Links in the description box for you. Okay? But like I said at the beginning of this video, I do not doubt that these people have seen something. You know where we're going. Second Corinthians. They're vacuuming upstairs. Second Corinthians chapter 11 verses 12 on to verse 19. But what I do that I will do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion, that wherein they glory, they may be found even as we. For such are false apostles, not chosen by the Lord, deceitful workers transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. See, uh, verse 13 right there also is good evidence that these apostles made by men are not validated by the Lord and the Lord has no approval on them. Yeah. Verse 14. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness. Oh, I'm so holy. I'm so humble. I, I've seen the Lord. You, you haven't because you're not of the esoteric or elitist because he only does it. That's, that's charismatic from beginning to end. I don't, I don't speak in tongues. Well, that, that, that's a special gift that God don't. And I'm in pride. I have a pride problem. Yeah. But the Lord whoops me daily over it. Yeah. Yeah. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. I say again, let no man think me a fool. If otherwise yet as a fool, receive me that I may boast myself a little. That which I speak, I speak it not after the Lord, but as it were foolishly in this confident of boasting, seeing that many glory after the flesh. <laughs> I will glory also. For ye suffer fools gladly, seeing ye, ye yourselves are wise. Yeah, ye suffer fools gladly, who said they've been to hell and been to heaven. God spoke to me. And yeah, sometimes it's actually scripturally very good. Yes, remember, the devil knows truth. The devil, is, the devil is a better, better than most men at the scriptures are because this book talks about his demise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, remember, the devil himself is a cemeterian, seminarian, is a theologian. Yeah, yea, hath God said. Yeah. S Satan knows the scriptures better than any man. No marvel. So, 
what these people have seen? Is it possible that the Lord can appear to you today after what happened in the book of Acts? Because that's in this, this, one. No. They have Moses and the prophets. They have, do we have the scriptures? Let them hear the scriptures. God is not working in signs and wonders today. You did not see God. You did not see, and these people come up with endless arguments. Brethren, you come across someone who says they've seen the Lord. A fault was I, I tolerated such. I did. Out of friendship. Out of love. But when that specific thing about these Signs and wonders, these charismatic gift things got into the way. And of course, from Canadian bacon influence. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's sad. It's sad. Brethren, be aware of people who claim that they have seen God because they haven't. Rather, they have seen the little G God of this world. Is it possible? Is it possible? That God could reveal himself to someone today as he did in the book of Acts? No. No. <gasps> Brett, uh, no, because it would contradict the scriptures. God appeared to Cornelius, onto Paul, and <laughs> John in the book of Acts. <laughs> Come on. There were specific purposes for those which are not being reproduced today. We have the complete canon of scripture. God is not making cameo appearances to people today. It's not how it works. And if you are going to fight to the death that God has appeared unto you over all those who have the common salvation, aren't you special? Please repent. Please repent for your own sake. For it is too late. For those of you who have fallen for this nonsense are greatly deceived. And there's only two options. You're either deceived or a deceiver. Which one is it? Which one is it? So that's going to be it for this video. Uh, thank you to all you brethren who help us, who pray for us. Please keep us in your prayers. We need it now more so than ever. Hmm. The falling away is happening. It's been happening for a long time. But as I have told you of, brethren, the degree of those who are falling away is astonishing. And in uh, my personal life, it's been just incredible to see the falling away and those who I never expected. So... Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Got more videos coming this week. Thank you for those, like I said, who pray for us. Please keep us in your prayers. We really need it. The Lord's will be done. We love you. And thank you for so, uh, so much for watching this if you do. Hope this helps some of you. And as far as the comment section is concerned, I'm not going to allow comments on videos for right now. If you want to get a hold of me and stuff like that, links will be in the description box. But be warned, Bryce, Aaron, you guys send me pornography, I'm going to expose you. You send me filthy links, I'm going to expose you and name you publicly. Okay? Just so you know. So you will still be able to get a hold of me. So just for right now, no comments. Anyway, that's it. Going to get this video uploading. Thank you, brethren. We love you. We'll see you in the next video.